In this session, I would like to talk about hardware components related to your instruction execution. Before going to that, first of all, we start with this idea. So I am using five stages of instruction execution. Already I told you whenever you divide the instruction execution into some stages, then definitely you get an advantage of pipelining, correct? We will see that in pipelining. Why you get advantage if you have multiple stages in the instruction execution. Now, here I am assuming that let's say uh, I have five stages in instruction execution. The first stage is fetching the instruction. In the second stage, what we do is we understand the instruction. Okay, so that is called decoding. So we decode the instruction. Whenever I decode the instruction, I understand what is that instruction. Is it add, otherwise subtract, otherwise you know maybe shift, otherwise load, store, whatever. So by understanding the bits in this instruction register or instruction, we can understand whether what is the desired operation. Okay. After that, what we do is so we read the registers. Example, the instruction is add R1, R2, R3 something. Then here in this stage, I am going to understand that this is the add instruction and I will be reading R2, R3 register values into some temporary registers. Okay. So in the third stage, what I do is I will be doing the required arithmetic. Since it is an arithmetic instruction like addition, then already that registers R2, R3 values are read, right? So that values I will be adding in the ALU. We will see the hardware components, don't worry. So at this moment, just understand that in ALU stage, we will be adding the registers. After that, the I mean, we have to store the result back to R1, right? So that we will be doing in this stage, fifth stage. But in the fourth stage, what I do is I do memory access. Example, if the instruction is load, you know, R1 and 1000 of R2, something like this. Then what I'm going to do is in this memory access stage, I will be accessing the memory part, main memory. Okay. Let me show how this load R1 and 1000 of R2 will be executed. Okay. With respect to various stages. In the first stage, we will be fetching this instruction and we will be keeping it in instruction register might be. Okay. In that way, you can understand. So after fetch phase, what is going to happen is your instruction is in instruction register. After that, in this stage, second stage, we will be reading the registers, of course, plus we will be doing the decoding also, okay, decode. So, since we have pattern here, in, uh, instruction pattern, by seeing that instruction pattern, we can understand what kind of instruction it is, okay. So, such a way we have to design the decoder, okay. Assume that, let's say you have a decent decoder who is understanding that now current instruction is load, then what it will do is, it will read register R2 into source registers. That means in the second stage, we understand the instruction and we read the registers which are required. Okay, here especially that is R2. Now, in the third stage, what we do is, so we will be doing arithmetic. Sir, why for load instruction arithmetic is required, especially for this kind of instruction? So, you know the meaning of this one, right? Load R1, 1000 of R2. That means 1000 plus content of R2, already we have register R2 value, add them 1000 plus R2 and this addition is nothing but done here ALU, okay. So that means here also if our load instruction also ALU is required, correct. So 1000 plus R2 will be calculated. Once value is calculated, then we will be loading the value at 1000 plus R2 into R1. So there will be main memory. In that main memory, there is a location called 1000 plus R1, sorry R2. Let us assume that content of R2 is something 50. Then 1000 plus R2 will become 1050. We will go to 1050 and we will take that value. We will transfer that data okay, into a temporary register here. That is called memory access. Once you do memory access, once you get the data, in the next stage what we are going to do is, you know, storing the result into destination register. So now you have data which has to be read, uh, stored into R1 that we will do here. Okay. Now I will tell you how we are planning again. First we fetch here and we understand the instruction here and we read the uh, required registers values into in this stage. After that we will do arithmetic here in the ALU stage. After that we here, here we do memory access if and all if it is there. Uh, in the last stage, we will be doing what? Storing the result back into registers. Okay. 
so in that way we can systematically plan now we'll try to understand store okay example let's say store r1 in the 100 of r2 assume that content of r2 is 50 so what is going to happen i mean if i execute this instruction and in which stage what work is going on we will see first step instruction register this is let's say instruction register the first step is fetching whenever i fetch the data then sorry instruction that instruction the store r100 r2 will come here okay yeah in the second step we decode it and we understand that it is store instruction then the necessary signals we generate we will see that in control uh, see, control circuit generator okay that means we will be designing control circuit that circuit is going to generate appropriate signals because of that automatically remaining tasks will be done forget about that okay sir so how this control circuit will be designed so that automatically this 100 plus r2 will be added everything we will see later here our idea is how this i mean execution can be done in five stages i am explaining first so what is my expectation is in the first step i am just teaching you what is our expectation i am not teaching you at this moment why it is happening we will see that later that for that we need a circuit right so the circuit design part we will see later at this moment we are just understanding what we want so in the first level in the fetch stage we will be fetching the instruction in the second stage we will be decoding that instruction and understanding that it is stored then appropriately we will be doing the remaining stuff that remaining stuff is like this so in the decode phase we will be reading what r1 comma r2 so value of r1 let us assume that let's say value of r1 is something like 50 and value of r2 is 100 we will be reading in this phase okay so 50 and 100 in the next stage what we will be doing is alu so what is alu operation here is this absolute address sorry immediate value 100 and content of r2 which already we read which is 100 that 100 plus 100 will be added in this alu phase right that means so in this arithmetic phase 200 right you get here 200 alu so after that memory access in the memory access phase what we will be you doing is so we will be going to main memory especially to 200th location right 200 memory address where we will be writing this data 50 so that will be done in memory access stage after that in the fifth stage we don't have any work if you have to store anything into registers then we will be doing into this fifth stage so that's why finally fetch source uh, decoding and alu and memory access these four stages are essential here like you know they have significant work but in the fifth stage there is no work we will be keeping quite already i explained you right so this is about the five stage model we will be using what people realized is if the instruction execution is divided into five stages then most probably so it will be good right so now we will see the hardware components like how to design our hardware such a way that you know we can carry out all these tasks okay so we will see that first of all we start with simple idea that is how this registers can be accessed what is the model right assume that let's say you have some registers cpu register which are 32 or 64 whatever let us imagine that that is a file okay so this is a register file so in this register file if i specify the address we have to design it such a way that whenever through this address lines i will be using three address lines one two three so these two address lines generally for you know accessing the registers that that means you know taking the data out and one more address line this is let's say address c that is for giving the data try to understand so we have to design our system such a way that it should have collection of registers that means we have to implement a circuit such a way that that should have some 32 or 64 registers let's call it as register file okay so here each rec i mean this row is nothing but one register now you have to design it such a way that so you whenever address lines are specified the per correct otherwise the desired register should be enabled that should be able to access okay we should be able to access now second thing sir why this one two three lines so our risk design is such a way that our instructions are uh, such a way that 
we need most probably three resistors right so you see example add r1 r2 r3 in each instruction especially in this kind of arithmetic instruction we will be using three resistors right two for you know uh, taking the data and one for giving the data right similarly load load r1 100 of r2 here of course only two at most two resistors are required correct now similarly store store r1 something 100 of r2 if you do this then here one is for storing the data one register one is for taking the data similarly in load one is for you know this one see we will be taking the data from 100 plus r2 and we will be storing it in r1 correct so here also we require one register to store and one register to get the data but of course here if you see store r1 and 100 of r2 we need two register to take the data correct but we are not giving the data back correct so in that way if you see we need two register to take the input and we need at most one register to send the data back right such a way we have to design our register system okay now example see this is a model we will be using assume that let's say these are all registers so to add a address a address b whenever i specify how to understand this i am telling specify address a address b here whenever i specify like that then data automatically comes from these cables okay this is not a single line okay it's not a one bit cable so this is a line from which you will be getting all the data of one register example register size 32 bits you will be getting some 32 bits here okay similarly another register also let's say the size is 32 bits you will be getting 32 such bits right now i'll explain with one example whenever you write add r1 r2 r3 so what is going to happen i will tell you assume that let's say somehow your control circuit should be is, is designed such a way that this r2 is automatically connected here r3 is connected here so what is happening content of r2 is specified as address a uh, address b and content of r3 is specified as address a then automatically this register r2 register r3 will be selected their data will be taken here you will get here right now sir what about this one i connect it here so that whenever r1 address is specified then that register one of the register example this is r1 that will be ready to take the data right sir how to give the data then see through this line okay so this line is specially designed for giving the data example you have some value 50 okay you want to give that value here then simply connect like this of course but that is not our purpose we will be doing what we will be storing the result after adding r2 value and r3 value how to get r2's value and r3's value now i show now by this time you clearly understand this if you really want to get r2 value r3 value specify r2 address here and r3's address here okay when you do that then what is going to happen here you have to specify address of r2 address of r3 then the data of r2 data of r3 comes from here now really you want to implement add r1 r2 r3 what you have to do you know you have to connect r2 comma r3 here and we have to take the data see data comes from here then take an alu okay so this is let's say your alu and we connect like this one of the input to here one of the input here assume that this alu is designed such a way that it can take some 32 bit inputs and it is going to add them sir you did not teach us how to do addition already i taught you right so in arithmetic part already we have covered that part so how to do addition of 32 bit numbers we have seen right so using such circuit so here this box should be replaced by that adder circuit then you get the result see here some 32 bit or 33 bit value you are getting assume that let's say 32 bit data you are getting back then what you do is specify r3 here and connect this line here so what is going to happen finally r2 r3 the content will be taken here and they will be added here let's say it is added added then the result is taken here and that is connected here and if you connect r3 here 
So whenever you enable this R3, that means whenever you specify R3's address here, automatically the right, sorry it is R1, right? It is R1. So whenever you specify address of R1, since you connected this cable here, the result will be stored in the appropriate register in that way. So address A, address B, address C can be used. Such a way we have can design it. Okay. So that this is very important circuit we will be using in our uh, hardware devices. Okay. So remember this component, we will be using this one. Already I told you, I am going to teach you hardware components related to execution of any instruction. Correct. So we will be using this hardware component very regularly. Just remember it. Now we'll revisit that example. Uh, if you see what is the difference you are seeing here, there is one multiplexer, right? So why this multiplexer? And you just focus here, immediate value, correct? So this, there are some instructions which, re which doesn't require data from the register, right? So they require data from immediate value. That means, you know, from the instruction itself, correct? Example, you have this kind of instruction at maybe R1 and R2 and hash this hash is just for uh, you know our imagination correct so there will be one machine code related to this one so that differentiates add r1 r2 r3 and add r1 r2 hash 100 assume that let's say your processor can understand the difference between this one and that one okay such a way we have to plan our machine instruction uh, patterns at this moment assume that let's say this is one of the operand is given as immediate operand correct so how to execute it the previous circuit will not work because there was no ch uh, chance of taking the immediate value directly correct so that circuit was focusing on this kind of instructions add r1 r2 r3 that was working fine for this one now if i add this extra component this one multiplexer then you can execute this kind of instructions let's try to understand that okay so how you see somehow so you give r1 here okay sorry r2 here okay so whenever i specify address of r2 here then a will be you know the data of a will come from here now such a way we have to design the circuit i am telling so second thing so somehow you give 100 here immediate value then what is going to happen 100 will flow like this sir but it is mul why multiplexer i will tell you so this circuit is going to support this kind of instructions and this kind of instruction what is another one add r1 r2 r3 if you want to have this kind of uh, instruction execution then in the place of this immediate value this line should be enabled okay and uh, r3 should be connected here understand now by connecting r2 r3 here automatically what happens r2 comes here and R3 will struck here. If carefully, if you select the proper line in these two, that is the job of multiplexer. So there will be one control line. Okay, one one line control line. Okay. So by properly adjusting this control line, we will be able to select either this one or this one. Now, whenever the instruction is add R1, R2, R3, then we have to select this one. And whenever it is add R1, R2 hash 100 then this immediate value to be selected such a way this control line should be enabled right properly we will see how to enable example uh, see this is 0 this is 1 so what do you want exactly at this moment this one right 1 that means you want to have input from this 1 so that's why you just write control line 1 that means enable the signal we will see that part later right so how this control line will be appropriately enabled whose job is that control circuit we will be designing that at this moment assume that let's say uh, we are just designing the circuit part okay but how to appropriately enable that is a job of another machine i can say uh, another circuit that is called control circuit we have to design it i will teach you how to design so all that questions will go to again control circuit okay now at this moment don't worry about that so finally, this machine or this circuit, this small circuit is able to add R1, R2, I mean execute add instruction of this model and this model, yes or no? But appropriately the signal should be enabled, right? That means appropriately that line should be passed. That will be taken care by control circuit, just remember it. Now finally, you understood this model, right? Now, what happens really if you connect R2, R2 here, 
then automatically data comes here let's see that seriously now sir what about this one for add me give you know don't give anything don't give anything then maybe whatever the previous data whatever it is having uh, maybe is that will be enabled doesn't matter you don't get any wrong why because we are not supplying any uh, valid information here right sir what if it takes some wrong information do you know one thing right whenever you don't uh, connect something like example let's say you have some cable in that cable if you don't connect anything then what happens it will have some old value right in digital electronics you already learned so this will have some old content correct so that will be that means example in the previous instruction this add b address b was connected to something r4 then that r4 register will be enabled here sir then you get wrong right r4 was not our intention yes not a problem because if really you execute the things properly what we are going to do is we will not be specifying any valid address here but only we are giving here a valid address here r2 slowly r2 comes i am showing you how to execute add r1 r2 hash 100 using the circuit so r2 slowly comes here perfect then now 100 we give here and the control signal will enable properly so that you know we give one signal here whenever i give one signal here then this line will be selected then 100 will pass through this cable then 100 plus r2 will be added if you take adder here okay i'm assuming that appropriate sir what is alu sir alu is nothing but set of devices i can say set of circuits add a circuit subtract maybe if and all if it is if it is there then subtract a circuit otherwise maybe comparator okay division i mean division circuit multiplication circuit you know shift circuit everything the collection of all the arithmetic logic units that's it you know that right so it will have lot of circuits so the right one should be enabled sir who will enable that sir uh, how do we know that otherwise how processor knows that now at this moment adder should be enabled don't worry so that will be done by again control circuit so this ALU will have some control lines like this okay if you want addition this signal should be enabled that means this line should be enabled if you want subtraction this one if you want shift this one if you want you know multiplication this one such a way there will be sick you know switches i can say otherwise i can say some cables so appropriate cable if you select then automatically appropriate circuit will be enabled and that will do the desired task such a way we can plan it so that we don't discuss here that you have to learn it in digital electronics okay so at this moment assume that because of our operation which is add did you remember i said decoding decoding is nothing but understanding that it is addition and appropriate adder circuit should be enabled here that will be done by your control circuit i will teach that okay now at this moment assume that let's say we have adder that is going to work apply your brain now okay since we know that it is addition then take addish adder and connect them this r2 and 100 to adder so that r2 plus 100 will be added so where it has to be stored we have to store that r2 plus 100 into r1 for that we have to connect this add c to r1 okay so this is what should happen right for that we have to design the circuit finally at least we have a circuit which is going to do whatever we want the only thing is it should be controlled properly right that's why control unit we will be designing that control unit it's not a big deal so finally this is one important circuit we need to evaluate otherwise execute some instructions now we'll slowly extend it okay now to in execute load instruction store instruction and add instruction everything what kind of complete member i mean uh, circuitry you require if you want to know then this will be the idea okay so now here this circuit otherwise this i can say this also known as data path this is also known as data path so this i can say forget about the data path keyword you will slowly understand why it is data path because your data is traveling from here to like this in that way okay that's why it is called data path so you have circuits through this data is going to pass that's why it's a data path apart from that it's a first of all a circuit so this circuit is enough to execute any instruction okay now we'll see the functionality of this circuit sir why are you teaching us circuit sir 
So, in the gate exam, they do not ask any question related to a particular circuit, yes. But if you have idea like you know how your typical instructions are getting executed, then you get confidence. Otherwise, you know if I do not teach you the circuit part, then what happens is you, you will lose you know confidence. That means you, your brain says that you do not know actually what happens inside the computer. Then you cannot answer easy questions, right? Even easy questions. That is a problem because of lack of you know confidence. When you understand the real things like complete things like you know how computer executes your instructions everything that boost ups your confidence because of that easily we can solve questions. Okay? Now that is why let me teach you this circuit part. So using this we can execute end to end like you know load store everything can be executed using that we will see that. So let me show this component here first of all this is set of registers you know right. So it can register file also known as register file. Can you locate this component here somewhere? Yes, you can locate it. Where is that? Register file here. These are all set of registers. Now, so there should be two address lines for input, one for output. That means, sorry, two for output, one for input. To take the input, one address line. To take the data inside the registers, one address line. To take the data out, to bring the data out, two address lines, we know that. But appropriately they should be connected that will be done by your control circuit at this moment let us we do manually like you know we will give appropriate you know I mean using our human brain other our brain we will be uh, connecting appropriate registers ok slowly you will get the experience do not try to understand everything at a time right. So here now I teach you how the circuit works slowly now first thing this is nothing but this one see register file register file. Second thing, you have multiplexer, here we have multiplexer, you have ALU, we have ALU. Sir, but we have this RA and RB, I did not understand why these two registers, I will tell you. So, <clears throat> because we are going to do the things with pipelining, pipelining is one important aspect, otherwise you know using that technology, we will be doing parallel execution of instructions. For that, your data, I mean your uh, machine should be designed in a stage way like that means like a st uh, I mean your instruction should be executed as multiple stages already I explained right. So when you are doing the work in stages sometimes you have to hold the data and you have to pass the data to the next stages agree that is why so this intermediate registers are going to help you. So what we will be doing is we will be imagining this circuit as stages actually so this uh, stage to here I will slowly you will understand ok do not worry. So here to here this circuit is going to do stage 2 functionality. Now this circuit here to here ok forget about these registers if I forget this registers is it not a register file which is connected to ALU see register file is connected to ALU forget about temporary registers that temporary registers is just you know like buffers they will hold your temporary otherwise intermediate data ok. So that will be important for us in pipelining at this moment let me design the circuit like that ok. Slowly you will understand the purpose. Now see register files and ALU correct multiplexer. So this component is this right. So uh, apart from this component we will be using some extra component what is that I will explain you. So here finally you will be doing ALU right once you do ALU. Then again we will be holding the data in temporary register that register is becoming an input for the next stage. So you see here first of all we will see the stages. So this is stage 2. Now whatever we do with this circuit is stage 3 functionality. You do not understand at this moment because you do not clearly imagine what is stage 2 what is stage 3 correct. So do not worry I will take one instruction like load or store and I explain you the circuits functionality at that time you map that oh this is stage 3's functionality automatically you learn it ok. So this is at this moment stage 4 functionality and see here to here and here to here stage 5 functionality. We do stage 5 functionality here and here ok. To understand that clearly we take one example ok. Let us take first addition part same thing. So we learned already how to do addition right let us use that one add R1 R2 let us use immediate address. Whenever you have add R1 R2 immediate address 100 what is going to happen is first step. So here 
sir you did not show a stage number one what is stage number one that is fetch stage right so here fetch stage is different that means you know so this circuit is not about fetching the instruction that will be done by another uh, another circuit that i am not discussing at this moment okay that is little bit complicated so we are learning the circuit and the data path which is related to stage 2 stage 3 stage 4 stage 5 in the stage 1 we what we do forget about the circuit what is your expectation from stage number 1 in the stage number 1 this instruction should be fetched correct so after that so remaining thing you know right so we have to in the stage number 2 in the stage number 1 this instruction should be fetched yes now we have this instruction so what is going to happen in the second stage in the second stage this register 1 register 2 this value will be appropriately connected that will be done by control circuit we will see that later right so at this moment let me connect properly you tell me we have two address lines correct out of them how many are useful because one of them is immediate value right so immediate value we provide here that means your control circuit should work the circuit should work such a way that immediate value in this point this 100 should be connected okay so second thing r1 r2 100 this r2 should be connected here we know that correct yes now this r1 address will be connected here so that now this register file is ready to take data into r1 and at the same time it is ready to give data of r2 through this cable right so finally can i say like this r2 is coming here sir what is coming here some dummy data however we are not taking it so assume that your multiplexer is properly selected by your control circuit so that this see this 100 is passed that's why it is called data path right now see your data is transferred finally you remember one thing instruction execution is almost like you know so moving the data right you can easily observe what are we doing just we are moving the data almost from here to there there to here that's it so that's why mostly i can say this is your circuit is nothing but data path now 100 will pass like this correct so 100 plus this r2's content will be added finally here 100 plus r2 will be done right 100 plus content of r2 whatever will be added here then that will come into a temporary register the output will be taking into a temporary register called rchet now can i say one thing so far what happened up to stage 3 is done that's why it is called stage 3 in the stage 3 generally what we do arithmetic that's why we are doing arithmetic in the stage 3 so this circuit be related to stage 3 now once you get the output that we will be storing in rchet so that will be supplied to you know this multiplexer okay now that is the beginning of stage 4 you tell me what should happen sir this why this multiplexer here in this example we directly connected right the alu's result should be directly connected to register why are you using multiplexer because already i told you we need a circuit which can do addition load store everything to do all that stuff this multiplexer is required i will tell you the purpose of this multiplexer clearly at this moment you tell me what do you want sir i want to uh, store this result i don't even want temporary register sir directly i want to connect here to here then only addition will be done by your circuit but to do load and store that method will not work right so that's why so what is going to happen is here the result that rz will be connected to the multiplexer so that multiplexer is connected to memory see here if you see the cable we will be connecting it to memory data and this is actually written address written address i will teach you so where from where written address comes i will teach you from where memory data comes these two cables separate i mean different okay different story don't worry about them at this moment i will explain that for this instruction assume that your control circuit properly enabling the cable so that that means you know there will be two control signals because of these two control signals assume that let's say this uh, channel is selected by in multiplexer if this channel is selected what happens the alu data whatever you whatever the computation is done that addition result will come here then it will pass through this multiplexer it will come to r by then this r wise data will be taken back to the register file because already we enabled the right register you see since this address is connected to r1 so whenever this data comes that will definitely go to r1's i mean register so that data will be stored in r1 right now 
sir uh, what if that register file is not ready at that time to take the data so for that who is who should be ready at what time will be decided by your control circuit okay so it's a big thing we will see that slowly okay assume that really register file at that time was ready and this address whenever we specified then that re corresponding register was enabled and that was ready to take the data then when data comes it will take it right such a way we can design a circuit right it's transferring from one register to another register right so finally see properly if you generate the signals like you know so we can say like this in the first clock tick this should be done in the second clock tick this should be done in the third clock tick this should be done in the fourth clock tick this should be done in that way if you systematically plan your circuits okay then definitely the desired task will be done right so this circuit really helps you in executing this add r1 r200 only thing is these are all passive devices they are ready to do the work but appropriately we have to assign the jobs so example let's say this alu should do addition only when the data is available in these lines correct but it should not do addition before data comes into this re and rb understand so for that there should be timing so timing will be generated by again control circuit your control circuit will give the timing to these circuits don't worry these are all passive devices it's like slaves for us we have to appropriately select them to work okay we will see that part slowly now we will see how this load instruction will be executed okay load let's say r1 whether this machine or circuit will help us in executing load r1 100 of r2 okay let us try so what we do is i want to use this device or uh, this circuit and i would like to do this operation for that what i do is i will tell you finally the destination is r1 the content at 100 plus r2 there is a main memory in that main memory so this is let's say 100 plus r2 memory location 100 plus r2 there is a data called x that x should come to r1 we have to pass that x into r1 that is what the meaning of this instruction how this instruction will be executed we will see in the first step assume that already fetching step is done step number one is done or stage number one's work is done now we are seeing this circuit is a only partial circuit which is doing the functionality of stage two stage three stage four stage five we will see in the stage two so your control circuit and i'm missing one part what is that control circuit your control circuit will decode this instruction and it will understand that it is load and appropriately it will connect otherwise appropriately this circuit will be used by this control unit okay so we will see that so this control unit will connect like this r1 here okay so there is the address here line right here r1 will be connected so that now in the register file r1 register is ready to take the data only thing is data should come right now second thing 100 plus r2 we have to take 100 here right same thing so we can do one thing here we can pass your control circuit will pass 100 here now your control circuit will pass you know r2 here right that means this stage sorry this line input line should be connected to r2 now this is anything we don't bother so that what happens you see now r2 registers content will come here and here some content will come which is not ours don't worry maybe wrong content doesn't matter because we did not give a valid address here some invalid address will be already existing that will work and that will give some data here junk data i can say in the next stage what happens we'll see once data comes then see slowly it will flow like this correct now r2 data will come here slowly this wrong data will come here and it will struck at multiplexer so for multiplexer there is a control selection right now here this control circuit will give right signal such a way that this time this cable will be selected such a way we have to plan then only it will work properly otherwise you get wrong answer so 100 will pass like this so now here your control unit should generate a proper signal so that adder will be selected here so 100 plus r2 will be done here so that result will come like this 100 plus r2 correct now that will be stored here 
then recall it is load right now 100 plus r2 now this c multiplexer here are you going to store 100 plus r2 into register file no that means here this multiplexer should work properly so that data this 100 plus r2 should not go inside the multiplexer then which one should go sir i will tell you see the cable that 100 plus r2 is also connected to memory address okay that means here what happens i am missing some part of the circuit that's why you are not understanding you might not understand clearly so remember one thing here there will be a processor memory interface processor memory interface what is the work of that processor memory interface i will tell you in this interface so it is ready to take always memory address whenever you give memory address to that memory interface then that is going to give the data inside that memory address okay since we are connecting this cable to that memory interface then what are we providing to that memory interface one memory address what is that at this moment 100 plus r2 so 100 plus r2 will be taken by that memory interface which i did not show in the circuit right so remember one thing your computer is very complex right and complicated you can't understand everything at a time that would not be good so do don't you expect from me that you know i write complete circuit complete computer circuit and if i explain then you will be messed up right that's why i don't do that only important things i'm teaching you so finally what happens is so here the data which is 100 plus r2 right 100 plus r2 comes like this so since this memory address is connected to this memory interface that 100 plus r2 will be taken by this interface and it will give the data at x so slowly that interface will give you x here that x will come like this see the memory data cable so finally assume that let's say that interface is going to give us memory data through this cable so that say so slowly it will come like this now multiplexer is ready with data here data here data here correct which one will be selected that depends on the instruction your control circuit understands that it is a load instruction and data is going to come from the memory so and especially the valid data is now memory data correct so that's why this cable is appropriate for load instruction so sir how that uh, control unit to understand that we have to design the circuit such a way that whenever it sees load instruction so at right time this cable should be this multiplexer should be enabled okay don't worry we can do that it's not a big deal assume that let's say here there are some control signals finally the job of controls unit is deciding the appropriate cables for that there will be in some control signals right so by properly tuning this control signals the right line can be selected it's not a big deal we can automate it not a problem that is what the job of control unit we will see how to design control unit for that we have lot of techniques hardware technique second one micro instruction model we will see that because that is very important so now here at this moment assume that let's say that is granted so automatically this cable will be selected so now data comes like this that means the memory data will come to ry in the next stage so by the time first of all initially it will be stored here in the next clock cycle might be so in the stage 5 the data will be stored back to this register at that time your control circuit should enable this address line with r1 understand yes it's not a big deal for your control circuit right so finally yes load r1 100 of r2 can be executed this using this circuit if you appropriately enable the control signals right similarly we can show for store and you know other stuff also i will teach that